So over the weekend, taxi operators warned that as of Monday, there would be a three-day all-island public transportation strike in reaction to the new Road Traffic Act. Today is set to be day two. What are the pressing concerns? Look here. Hey, hey. Mm. This is going to be a hot one because Mr. Newman knows me and him. <laughs> Edgerton <laughs> Newman, the president of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, joins us. Mr. President, morning, good, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Nice to be here. I'm good. Uh, a little bit on the weather because I don't know what is happening on the street. Yes. It's full. Um, but um, I'm good. Fair to find. Fair to find. Yes. Partly, so, partly cloudy. Partly so. cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me start off with a balance and ask, first yes. of all, what are the issues that, that, that you and the taxi operators are having with the new Road Traffic Act? A myriad of issues. Okay. You know, um, we are trying, we were in a meeting yesterday trying to list the issues. But the one that jumped out of the box um, right now is a matter of the restrained seats. Although the Prime Minister came out in 48 hours after we started to hear the, our concerns, and um, make an adjustment mm -hmm. verbally, mm -hmm. saying that the police should take it easy, mm -hmm. and they will be taking the matter to the National Road Safety Council, one right. of the institutions that put the, the, that thing together. It gives some sort of relief to us, but understanding the law, the constable have a right to do what he's supposed to do under the law. So although the Prime Minister said, I mean, take it easy, uh, in other words, they can still um, right. go out then in the counterparts. Uh, police has, has done that. Mm -hmm. So the operators are concerned that it might happen to them. The issue also of um, what they call fine and confined for contrary, operating contrary to the terms and of your road license, they are not too sure what that means. From where I sit, the government promised us um, last year, June, a national public education program mm -hmm. for this new road traffic act, which has been coming since 2014. Huh? And up until today, as we speak, it is us in the sector who have to start this public education campaign. And we're saying, how can you have a major change to the, to the, tra to, to the motoring community without having a campaign to know exactly what is what we are confused as to certain things in terms of the, the, the one person said you can't tow your own vehicle if it broke down. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that yes, you can tow your vehicle, but it's on the, the our local thoroughfare, not on the main, the, the, the highway, like Highway 2000. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the campaign is very important mm -hmm. because as we speak, operators are confused okay. because the police is out there. And there's nowhere in the Kingston Metropolitan Transport region for a taxi man to pick up and set down. That's key. Yet still... Areas to stop. To Areas stop, to right? Stop. you get a ticket. And what is going to happen if we don't fix the system now? I will come back here to talk about another strike. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Right? Because not. tickets are going. Yes. We want to, we're going to ask for another, um, what do you call it, amnesty or payment plan. So we really have to fix the system as we put out this new road traffic act. Mm -hmm. What is happening now, the act is out on the February 1, but the system has, remains the same. Okay. And, and the, ticket, the cost of tickets is like you're just trying to rip us off. I mean, because you don't have the system in place, yet still you have the fines. And I want to stick must... up in there with you with it. Yes. So I hear you with a lack of information um, and the fact that more information could be disseminated. That's we don't want confusion because confusion leads to chaos. That, that is true. That's what is happen chaos. happening now. And we want the taxi operators on the road because people need to get to where they're yes. going. Let's get to the cost of the tickets now and the rip-off. Yeah. Um, let's get to the tickets, period. Mm -hmm. Some of your constituents, Mr. Newman, have enough tickets to fill a tank. 16 movie theaters. <laughs> That's true. Um, and they're not going to watch no show. Yes, yeah. Uh, I hear many of them complaining now that the ticket prices are high and um, just why put a ticket them and done. And, but there's a large issue with compliance yes. with your constituents. Mm -hmm. um, there are many people who are watching this morning who don't feel any pity or yes. sorry for yes. you because of the way some of your constituents mm. behave on the streets. There are law unto themselves, many I of them, mm -hmm. a risk on mm -hmm. the streets. Mm -hmm. Why can't you all 
all of you, mm -hmm. or the majority of you, or maybe we just take the few bad apples who are on yeah. the road every day, spoiled a bunch. Tell Comply. Percent. Act Please. within the rule of law so you don't have to rack up all of these tickets. Mm -hmm. Pay the outstanding ones you have so you don't have to be carrying it, logging it for years, 29 and 30 years, as I've heard on some stations. What's going on? Let's speak to compliance. There are 80% of the public transport sector that pays your ticket. Majority of those, that 80%, when they pay the tickets, it returns as unpaid. Right? So we are speaking about a system <coughs> that is not right. The government admit that, yes, this man... My, my legal team, we went to him a, week, a few weeks ago, he, had, he shows 807 tickets from one man. All of them paid for. When he go for his printout, all of them come back as unpaid. That is done before our legal team. So we are saying that Mr. the Newman, system... Can I stick one more piece? Yeah. 807 tickets? 807 tickets. Should that man still be on the street? Absolutely. Because the system provides for him to get those tickets. Yes, he, has, he gets some um, rightly, but majority of those tickets, he get them for stopping in halfway tree. Gotcha. Where there's okay. no space for him to stop. There's not one single taxi stop in Jamaica. And a taxi is not, not supposed to stop at a bus stop. The facilities for parking is nowhere in the Kingston Metropolitan Transport Region for a taxi to, 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 um, to park. Yeah. So they have to park where, listen, you pick up a man in Stony Hill. You take him to half and have him drive around. You know what he does? When you reach the stoplight, he jump out. Mm. The police is coming for you. These are things that happen every single day. And the police know that. When you speak to the police high command, you say, yes, these things ought to be in place. But tomorrow morning, you have the ticket book. Go to half and you don't see how many police there. Maybe 30, 40, 50. I saw 75 police in one day. Everybody have a ticket book. Mm -hmm. Because they know it's a revenue for government. That's the only way you get revenue, you know, from, from, from us out there, because you don't get it from the man who have the gun. You, you, you pay him, you take care of him in, in, in lockup, but you get money from us. It's a big revenue, it's on the budget of government. Last year, it was $290 million the government wanted to receive from tickets. You should not have that on, on your budget. No, because the issue is safety. Anybody can tell you that Todd's is the group that talks about road safety. We have that. 24-7, we have a group called call itself the National Transport um, Steering Committee. They are working on the legal programs and promotional programs for the transport sector. We work every single day, but the government turns a blind eye in most cases Mr. on Newman, the sector. Can I tell you that you need to do more interviews in the morning? I like this oh. Edgerton Newman. <laughs> Hey, calm and yes, cool and be calm. Yes, and, and, and it's allowing... After, after no, but I'm going to tell you why, no. a storm. I mean, yes, <laughs> but I'll tell you why. Because it's allowing me now to hear you, and I'm listening to you, and I'm saying, okay, there are some real concerns, because if the infrastructure does not support the action, yeah. then there is a problem. And so what I'm hearing from you is the taxi operators don't have the infrastructure. They don't have places to stop. So if you're going to ticket me for just stopping arbitrarily on the road, provide somewhere for me to go. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. I'm also hearing, which is very important, that some of us, you may believe, are aware yes. of the things and, and what the laws are and the changes to the act. And we are not so off a so we need some kind of, which is not unreasonable. You, you we know, need we, some kind of yeah. public education you know, when we, program. When we, when we have that strike on the fateful morning of November 14th, Everybody, mm -hmm. you in the media, point finger a taxi man or a hoop a ticket. It's mm -hmm. not us who had the ticket. We strike because of the motoring public have the tickets. When we go down to the traffic court, who we see down there? Not taxi men, you know? Okay. Is everybody, the bank manager, everybody that, have the tickets? It's just that who from you have it? We have enough. Have enough, yes. That's the problem. That, that's the problem. I want to ask you. Do we have to wrap no, up? No, we can't let Mr. Newman One no. question. No, sir. Mr. Newman, what are your operators doing wrong? What are you all doing wrong? Because I hear you here. You've made some salient points, as yeah. Harris has said. But believe me, I've been behind taxi men who stop. And I, I, I don't know how much back I almost run up into. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you too can. I so there you, it cannot be. We understand that there are concerns yes. and legitimate concerns. But. But. Merciful father. Oh, sat, God. I've I raised. sat for eight years plus 
waiting for increase so I can, the guys can be properly um, on the road. And we got 15%. They have to sometimes climb the sidewalk to catch a passenger. The, the social why? disorder. Why, why, sir? Why because that if they the don't do it, they're going to park the car and you can't get a ride to work. No, sir, they cannot drive the sidewalk. No, sir. what I'm saying, cannot because be of the social disorder in the society, it hangs itself over in the public transport sector. You have 8,000 PPV in the KMTR and you have no facilities for them. That is key, you know. No so training program for that. That's, I agree. If, mm. if that is in fact the case, then mm. that is something that ought to be rectified. Yeah. But I'm saying to you that the 20%, maybe who haven't paid the tickets, or the ones we interface with every day, are them, doing them a road bully. That, it's crazy. It is. Road it bully. Is crazy. Training and development is key. We are doing that. But I'm saying to everybody, go to work this morning. All my operators, go to work this morning. No strike today. When you hear that operator, this is as usual. Mr. Newman, who normally say, who no, no, go, say, go, yes. go. Children have to go to school, people have to go to work. Absolutely. It, I, I, it is such a pleasure to meet you in person, yeah. sir. <laughs> Have you oh. never met him before? I've never met him before. Okay. I cuss him on radio all the time. <laughs> but I've never met him in person. You should, you should invite him in the afternoon it, today. No, I'm not the same person who shows up in the morning. Maybe not the same me person. Like in the morning. I like him in the morning. It's cool in the morning. Yeah, I like him in the morning, sir. <laughs> President of the Transport Operators <laughs> Development Sustainable Services. Edgerton Newman. You see white name smile, Jamaica? Ah. Even Mr. Newman, come smile. on this morning. Smiling. I smile this morning. Smiling. <laughs> All right, coming up, folks, we get the details on the new consulate um, in Jamaica. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> All right.